Conservatives on Twitter have been all flutter over Elon Musk's Twitter files that were released last week, uh, claiming that there is evidence of the First Amendment being violated by Joe Biden, who was not president at the time, in censoring the Hunter Biden laptop story. Yes. Uh, look, that's not what happened. Of course, I, I went through uh, the entire Twitter file saga, as uh, did a lot of us uh, lefty commentators. Now, the city, uh, the story was indeed censored by Twitter. This is true. They, they did do that. Uh, Twitter decided to suspend uh, the account, your post, and suspend people who were talking about it. And then later on, they're like, ah, oh, it turns out, no, that was a stupid thing to do. And I agree. It was a stupid thing to do. Had they let the story run, it would have just petered out as another, you know, desperate right wing attempt to, you know, throw nonsense uh, at the wall. Still, um, this was censored, but not on the orders of the federal government. And now, again, the right wing seems to not understand what free speech is, what the First Amendment actually means. Uh, and apparently they're having difficulty trying to figure out who the government is. They, they also seem to have an issue with time. You know, thinking that Joe Biden was president in, uh, you know, early 2020 <laughs> when he was not. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, let's go to a video here. This is uh, Brian Kilmeade. Basically, you know, dropping some truth about the Twitter files and how, yeah, the government really wasn't involved. According to the guy who Elon Musk gave all the secrets to, he said, I don't see federal law enforcement involved in the laptop story right. at well, all. Maybe they weren't, and we'll get answers when yeah. oversight, because these exactly. Republicans are taking over. Well, how could that be the case? Is the FBI part of the government? Yeah. Of course. Did the FBI get the laptop? Did they go ahead and brief these major social media companies about not doing certain things and suppressing certain things? In the run-up to the election, we heard and we talked about from this couch warnings from the Department of Homeland Security and federal law enforcement that uh, given what happened in 2016, they might try it again. We heard that. But Matt Taibbi, who has seen everything, said federal law enforcement not involved in Twitter and the laptop story. All right. Period. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, uh, you heard it uh, very clear. The federal government was not involved in censoring the laptop story. That's it. Now, look, the Biden campaign did ask for these tweets to be removed. Um, and the ones they asked to get removed and that were removed by Twitter, well, shouldn't have been there in the first place because they were mainly pictures of Hunter Biden's penis. You know, maybe not something you want to have on your on your platform. You know, tallywhacker. Tighten up my meat. You don't want that. You don't want that. That I'm pretty sure that breaks Twitter's terms of service against revenge porn. And that's what that is. So look. Um this didn't get mentioned, by the way, uh in this segment, but the Trump administration had also asked Twitter to remove certain tweets and stories and had also had their requests granted. And, and that was uh, mentioned by a Taibbi as well. So you could argue then if uh, uh, anybody in the government was involved in censorship, you could say it was the Trump administration because he was well, Donald Trump was president at the time. And who was running the FBI at the time. Well, that would be a Trump appointee, Christopher Ray. Hmm. Well, I, I don't understand. I, I thought it was the Biden administration that was uh, using Twitter to censor conservatives because that's what they keep saying. And it turns out that's not the case at all. <laughs> no, what happened is the FBI under Trump appointee Christopher Ray, follow me, okay, uh, put out a general warning that the Russians might try to put out disinformation like they did in 2016. So Twitter and Facebook, they took that and they're like, eh, well, you know, we really want to be, want to be careful because that's bad for PR if we get caught again 
uh, spreading Russian propaganda. So, okay, we're going to make the decision uh, to censor the laptop story because we think it's garbage. It sounds like garbage hasn't been verified. It's coming from Rudy freaking Giuliani, whoa, whoa, whoa. who's kind of a idiot, uh, even though a lot of the stuff actually on the laptop was verified as being legitimate. Instead of making the story about that, the right wing has made the story about the alleged First Amendment violations of the censorship, which actually wasn't directed by the federal government. So, that said, I think the laptop, a lot of the laptop, at least the stuff that's getting mentioned, like Hunter Biden's hog, uh, is a lot of salacious red meat. Seriously, though. Uh, you know, the, the fact that he's a very troubled individual, uh, has some drug problems, uh, and, you know, it involved in some shady business deals. Uh, but at the same time, he's a private citizen. He's never served in office. He's not running for office. He's under investigation for tax fraud by the DOJ. And if he gets indicted and convicted at a fair trial, there's no lefty out there that's going to lose any sleep over it. At all. Just not at all. In fact, we say, yes, good. If somebody is uh, doing tax fraud, we should go after them. Go after the tax cheats. And by the way, I'll also say, hey, that if you don't like uh, people profiting off their parents' names, I agree. I don't like that either. Uh, I don't like that uh, Hunter Biden uh, made, made, you know, tons and tons of money, millions of dollars off profiting off his dad's name. I also don't like the fact that Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner, Kushner got billions of dollars, two billion from Mohammed bin Salman. Hmm. Mohammed bin Salman, who uh, murdered, uh, or I should say, who ordered the murder and dismemberment of a Washington Post journalist. And of course, Ivanka Trump, who had met with President Xi, um, when, again, her father was president in a private meeting and was able to get special patents worth lots and lots of money for her to sell her goods in China. This was amidst a trade dispute or a trade war with China at the time. And by the way, those two did it when they were White House advisors. Which again, Hunter Biden was never a part of the government. Now, is the right wing worried about what Jared and Ivanka did? No, of course not. That said, there's the first video. We'll get to the next one here uh, because Brian Kilmeade is still not convinced. But if the FBI tells, if the FBI says, listen, I get rid of this, this is the Russians' disinformation, and they get rid of it. And there's a story they didn't coming out actually, They didn't actually get into the tools and say, Twitter, we're getting right. rid of this, this, this. But if the FBI is knocking at your door saying, Russian disinformation, Russian disinformation, just like 2016, and you do it, you can honestly say the FBI had nothing to do with that? The guy who's seen all the stuff says, but, but no what I just said, but if, if, if anything I said was wrong, then I'll then I'll agree. But the FBI was proven. You you watch you watch the uh, the, uh, the Zuckerberg sit there with Joe Rogan and say the FBI came and briefed me and said, look out. This is all the e-marks. And after it came, we froze right. it on their behest. And then Twitter said, right. I made a mistake when the FBI did it. And they never told the CEO of, of Twitter right. that they were doing it. In so the FBI didn't actually go in right. there and hit the passwords, I'm with but you, the Ryan. FBI did it. But so, I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to that say. Was Christopher Ray, Unless right? they walked in and say, shut down Twitter, we're taking it over. If that's what Matt Taibbi's looking for, he's never going to find it. Well, what Zuckerberg said was there was a general warning, and that's what uh, uh, Miranda Devine but wrote about yesterday. they knew about the laptop story. They so they come in and they say, there's a general warning. You're going to, you could get some stories about Hunter. I, they didn't just, tell him what the story right, was. I'm just yeah. reporting what I know for a fact is but what Matt Taibbi said. It all said. just seems like something went on behind the scenes. They didn't want us to know about it. And whoever's responsible, hopefully the Republicans can figure it out and, in and, January. And what's worse is they're doing it in other elections. They even played a role in Brazil's elections. You're going to find that out, too. Just wait. Just wait. Yeah, we'll find out that they did absolutely nothing in Brazil's election, and I'm going to look stupid. Brian, kill me for you. <laughs> and I guarantee when nothing happens, when they find nothing with Brazilians, uh, with Brazil's election, he's going to forget about it. <laughs> what? I didn't say that. Oh, what are you talking about? 
Tighten up my meat. I like my meat tight. You li I like my meat tight. What are you talking about? We're talking about meat here. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> look. You can tell, kill me absolutely horny for this to be true. I, I mean, they love that. What are you talking about? How did the FBI they gave out a warning? But then also went to admit, well, the FBI is not going to break down your door and tell you not to run this. Well, that would be literal First Amendment violations. So he just admitted, hey, if you're looking for them to actually do a First Amendment violation, then you're not going to find it, which is why they did a First Amendment violation. No, moron. You idiot. You dipshit. You idiot. No. Oh, my God. Look. The f Twitter and Facebook were not forced by the government to pull the Hunter Biden story. The entire claim of the First Amendment being violated is BS. If you want to make a case that, hey, this is a big tech censorship, then you would be right. This was big tech censorship that decided, hey, we're not going to run the story because we think the story is crap or we think it might be Russian disinformation based on what we know. And they were wrong about that. And they came out and admitted that they were wrong about that. And the right wing, perpetual victims as they are, continue to cry about it, to cry and whine endlessly, endlessly. Look, the fact that they're so interested and invested in keeping up this narrative tells you a couple of things. For one, it tells you that the censorship story is all they have. And of course, they try to falsely involve the government in it for just putting out a simple warning. There's nothing that's uh, also, it, it tells you that there's nothing that shows that Joe Biden was involved or that he had personally profited off his son. No, it's the reverse. Hunter Biden profited off of being a Biden. Now, if you want to, if you have an issue with that, that's fair. I also have an issue with nepotism. But they also believe that the, for some reason, had the story not been censored by Twitter, then it somehow would have changed the election. No, <laughs> I'm not buying that at all. There's nobody outside the right-wing echo chamber that actually cares about Hunter Biden. They, they really, they really, they're obsessed with it. Like, oh, if only the truth about Hunter Biden would have been uh, revealed in the election, it would have cost him, uh, it would have cost Joe Biden the election. Really? We were voting for... Joe Biden, not Hunter Biden, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Again, the whole thing is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But let's go to why the Twitter, fi the Twitter files were released anyway. So Elon Musk, again, buys Twitter, you know, a $44 billion midlife crisis buy. Uh, let's be honest about that. You know, $44 billion of divorce dad energy right here. Uh, and he's like, oh, God. Oh, this was a disaster. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done this. Um, all right. Uh, I know. I need to find a way to make my platform more valuable. I know. Let's reach out to Matt Taibbi, who apparently didn't have anything better to do. Even though, like, Matt Taibbi has had some excellent, great journals. I have one of his books. They're sitting on my bookshelf. He has to do some great work. But now, Elon Musk, the second richest man in the, in the world, reaches out and says, I got conditions. But if you meet those conditions, and, you know, Taibi doesn't tell us what those conditions were, but you, need, you can do a, an exclusive. I'm going to give you documents here uh, that, by the way, nobody at Twitter decided to destroy or take with them. Because I apparently didn't think it was a big deal, right? That it was going to uh, be anything that's scandalous. So that, again, tells you something, right? And we're going to give it to you, and you're going to go through them, and then you're going to give out the dirty deets. Which, in reality, Taibi didn't find anything dirty. Other than, oh, Twitter, uh, they just didn't like the story. You know, they, they thought it was crap. That's it. Now, uh, Musk, again, 
just did this because he wanted to distract people from how he's basically created the platform. To give him something special for his new right-wing audiences he has cultivated by being basically a, a reply guy. I mean, you look on Twitter, if you're still there, um, look at Elon Musk and who he replies to. And nothing more than right-wing trolls. That's it. That's his audience. That's his bubble now. So, I mean, that's who he hangs with, and that's who he's trying to woo and keep on the platform. Because he thinks he's going to somehow make money from it, from having this as a Twitter ex exclusive. So, publicity stunt. Okay. Um, look, the real conversation about this that could be had if we're having something substantive here is how, hey, maybe we shouldn't have corporate monopolies. Maybe corporate monopolies are bad because they do lead to the censorship when it comes to Twitter, which is supposed to be a town square, right? Uh, now, unfortunately, the right wing has twisted the idea of censorship as into, I really just want to say the N-word, and it's censorship if you ban me for saying it. Or, I really want to, uh, you know, uh, attack and bully transgender people to the point of where they uh, commit suicide you know, and you won't let me do it, so that's censorship. You, how dare you censor me from doing my targeted harassment campaigns? That censorship, free speech, what happened to free speech? That free speech doesn't exist on private corporate platforms. If you do want a town square, then maybe you might, might want to think about, I don't know, breaking up these tech companies and instituting uh, maybe something that is uh, a public forum that is protected by free speech to go along with these, you know, smaller media companies, social media companies as a place where, you know, your uh, free speech is protected. That's just one idea. And I'm sure there are plenty of other ideas on how to do an actual, uh, an actual free speech conducive platform that doesn't have so much power over the town square. That said, if you agree, then we could work together you know, have them broken up by antitrust laws and prevent them from gobbling up other countries, or I'm sorry, companies, maybe even countries. Who knows? So, as some of these corporations are worth more than a small nation. But no, if your only interest, though, is dunking on Hunter Biden, or I guess really desperately trying to see his hog, or, or standing rich people like Elon Musk for a little bit of attention, ooh, ooh daddy, well, then we know you're not actually interested in free speech or fighting against corporate censorship.